that there I believe is a range master three wheeler milk float but I might be wrong it's a, a range master is probably the latest of the three wheelers before they all went to four wheels and uh, there's the front off it the front's there so there's the mechanism the front with steering mechanism and there's the yeah, I think the battery sits in the middle on this one, or it might sit in there. I don't, in fact, I don't know where the battery does sit in the arts oh, at the back there. So, uh, I think that would be quite a slow float because it's got a small battery. You know, some of the milk floats that didn't go very far from the dairy actually had quite surprisingly small batteries. It's amazing that they had enough power, but they did. And, uh, yeah, there's another shot of it from the back, another three wheeler. Didn't intend to make another film, but I ran out just as I got onto the three wheeler, so I've started it off again. There's, a, there's that modern one, there's the typical suburban float. I think it's a Crompton electric car, I might be wrong. There's my car back. I'm really starting to get quite cold now because it is winter, my fingers are cold holding the camera. There's a good look at the chassis. And again, there is a lot of rust, but in fact, the metal's quite thick. You know, it's a perfectly serviceable chassis, just these painting. And as I was saying earlier, if you keep spraying stuff for WD-40 and whatnot, you see there, there's uh, mud guards are rusted through. Uh, that vehicle would be perfectly sound, because though the mud guards are thin metal, are rusted, the chassis is absolutely fine. But as I was saying earlier, you... Uh, yeah, it's got batteries tucked in either side of the drive shaft. If you... Uh, I found with experience that if you just keep spraying stuff with WD-40 every time you're working on anything it'll start rusting and uh, whenever I sell second-hand cars or any kind of second-hand equipment it's always hardly rusted more than when I got it and uh, you know any bits of it that look new when I got it get, get any vehicle always tend to look new when I sell it because you just get a thick layer of, like in the engine compartment, you get a kind of layer of goo build up if you keep spraying it with WD-40. And then that goo acts as kind of preservative and it is incredibly water repellent. In fact, WD stands for water displacement. And uh, there's another look at my float. Now, I really don't know what to aim the camera at next. I think I'll have a wander around here. And... Uh, Yes, I was, funny enough, I came here to take a picture of a three-wheeler that's disappeared because I know somebody was interested in it. So maybe they've already come and collected it or had it delivered. There's a little truck there. Thing about this place, if you're looking for a little electric vehicle to do up, you don't necessarily need a milk flight. They've got all sorts of that. You know, you might want to build that into a go-kart. There's a vehicle there, which uh, is a box van. Obviously, an electric box van. Another float behind it, the classic suburban four-wheeler. Um, there's another one here, but the roof taken off. This one is, you know, obviously it's just piled up in junk, but for all the goo and guns that's on it, it's absolutely there's nothing wrong with that. It'll very easy to do up. To sop all the bits out that need sopping out. It looks a bit cruddy, but not a problem. You know, there's a Smith's Cadillac there waiting to be rescued. Um, there's another Kavak in there, I believe. I can't really see it. There's a Kavak roof right across there. And there's another, I think again, a Kavak roof on top of it. I think the top roof is an Express Dairies roof, which is uh, the roof that Express Dairies had made to fit on their Kavaks. Express Dairies rebuilt a lot of their Smith's Kavak floats. And uh, would they change the... Uh, they changed the uh, roof of one of their own of this. This is just completely full of milk float bits. Controllers, resistors, power resistors. I mean, you really can't see much. And again, it just looks like a big pile of scrap. But actually, you know, in there is a gold mine of working contact. This is perfectly good spare parts. Chargers. There's another charger. You know, you've got every got old chargers here. Look at this, there's charges of every possible conceivable variety. 
and uh, rectifier stack there, or transformer stack there. You could, well, it might be a thigh resistor stack, I'm not sure. Battery box. There's axles down there. More axles there. There's a little vehicle there. There's actually another little vehicle behind a kind of hand truck thing. All the little vehicles there, which I believe is a kind of road sweeper. Which, uh, there's, a, there's a front of an Elizabethan. There's, a, there's another one, the same idea, same type. But I love this thing. If you were building a hybrid vehicle, you could take a pickup with the front wheel, disconnect the rear wheel drive from the engine so the engine only drives the front wheels and you could bolt that it's got the motor and everything on it and you could bolt that to the back and that would be your electric drive and what you do is you build your vehicle with two accelerator pedals one for the electric and one for the engine and you've got yourself a hybrid any front wheel drive vehicle like a van you could build that into the rear and the front wheels would obviously stay on the engine and gearbox and that would be your electric drive and there you have it one hybrid vehicle that's a complete module that and uh, i bet if you asked them there nicely they would i mean that would be a chain drive so you could change your ratio you could uh that wouldn't be a problem you could change your gear ratio no problem so whatever speed you need to do and the handy thing is, you see these axles here have got gear reducers built into them. And in fact, if that wasn't suitable, you could, these people would make you an axle with a motor attached to it, identical to that, that would make it for you and you could bolt that to your hybrid vehicle. Or even an electric vehicle, you just, you take out your engine and everything and you drop one of those in, drop an electric motor in, connect it up with a drive shaft and away you go. And uh, this here, this here is a, a basically sound chassis. There's obviously some corrosion on these bits where the batteries go, but they're easily replaced. And uh, it looks like there, it's a Smith's Cabac, but I've actually been told it's a Morrison chassis that's been rebuilt to take a Smith's Cabac cab. So it's a kind of mix and match. And uh, Oh, there's another milk float here, which is gone. That's amazing. I haven't been long away. Had a broken chassis. And amazingly, it still ran, despite the broken chassis. It would still go. I don't know whether it's been repaired or sent back to the customer. Uh, there's a half shaft there, if we need a half shaft. There's a spring there. There's more springs and brake discs. There's yeah, a kind of transformer-y thing there. I, what, I guess it's a charger. Or it might be a speed controller. I can't tell. It's just a black aluminium box and these are these are the cells these are the cases the battery cells live in and they look because uh, what they often do is when they re when they when the battery is worn out they open up the cell they throw away the lead bit they put a new lead bit in it and they put the cell back together so they reuse the battery boxes and they just re recycle the lead bit and lead batteries are very easy to recycle you don't need to separate any metals out because you've got lead as positive and negative plates so uh, uh you just uh, you just chuck the whole thing in the uh the steering boxes there and brake levers and gear steering gearbox uh, sharp you know columns yeah you lead acid batteries are very easy to recycle and uh that actually makes them very environmentally friendly i sometimes wonder about some of the really exotic battery technologies they're talking about these rare odd materials but uh, lead, lead acid batteries are easily recycled and obviously lead's poisonous if we eat it but uh, given really half decent environmental controls lead is actually a very environmentally way of sensible way of storing electricity as the technology improves uh, batteries improve and uh, we're just coming to the end of the film and that there Ben is back to my flight that I'm going